This is BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the Town of Brantford. Town of Brantford, Board of Finance, work session and budget meeting for Monday, March 26th, 2018. This is a special meeting. Uh, first on the agenda is citizens communication. Is anyone from the in the audience who'd like to address the board? Uh, you may do that now. Now we're going to go to item number two: is to hear a presentation for fiscal year 17 audit by Bloom Shapiro and Company. Welcome, uh, Jerry and Michael. And um, I might note uh, for the audience and the public at home that uh, Victor Casella, our sixth member, is joining us via teleconference tonight. So he will be listening in and participating as he sees fit. Thank you, Jerry. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, I just uh, want to go through the reports with you. I brought with me. Uh, Mike Popham, Mike's a manager uh, on, on your engagement uh, each year. He's been working on uh, the town audit for uh, for a number of years and has a lot of uh, a lot of good knowledge related to the uh, to the town. I'd like to start. Um, you have three reports plus a letter. Uh, the letter is uh, a piece of required communication. Our professional standards require that we communicate certain things with you, either verbally or uh, in writing, and we, we generally choose to do it in writing. Uh, this uh, letter talks about certain of the uh, conditions of the audit and the conduct of the audit, uh, dealing with the, the accounting practices. Uh, the letter basically is a, a boilerplate letter. Uh, there are no exceptions identified here. If we had uh, difficulties performing the audit, we would have to notify you. If we had uncorrected uh, or corrected misstatements, we would have to notify you. Disagreements with management, if we used outside uh, other consultations with other independent auditors to do your audit, all of those types of things, we would have to bring it to your attention through this letter. Uh, and uh, basically, the, the letter indicates that there were none of uh, those types of things to uh, to bring to your attention. <coughs> we issued two separate reports, <coughs> excuse me, on your compliance with state and federal grants. I'm looking first at the state report, state single audit report. The report has identified, um, well, let me backtrack, the report would report to you any uh, material weaknesses or significant deficiencies or material non-compliance that we found while performing the audits. <clears throat> Both the federal report and the state report have no findings to report to you. <clears throat> I would like to just go through the report a little bit. Uh, the state report, if you take a look at pages four and five, you'll see that the town received about $5.6 million in state aid. <clears throat> Most of that is through the education cost sharing grant, about $2.2 million. Another $600,000 in excess cost grants. Those are both shown on page five. The audit this year, um, as in all years, is conducted in accordance with the rules that are put out by uh, the state government and the federal government and utilizing the guidance that they have in their audit programs. If you look at page nine, there's a list of the programs that we tested for compliance and controls. They are the school-based health clinics, municipal purposes and projects, the town aid road grants, and the child daycare funds. <coughs> 
So those were the programs, uh, of all the programs that are listed on page four and five, those are the programs that we actually performed testing on to conclude that there were uh, no problems to report to you. <clears throat> on the federal side, the format of the report is exactly the same. And again, there is no items to report to you. On pages four and five is a listing of uh, a, a listing of all of the programs. Most of the programs uh, are are programs that are run through your board of education. There's about 1.1 million dollars of pass-through grants from the State Department of Education uh, that your uh, Board of Ed runs and another 500,000 that they run through the uh, cafeteria fund. On this side, uh, the rules are a little different uh, for federal grants and we tested one program that's shown on page nine. We've tested the special education cluster that cluster is made up of the um, the idea idea B grants, um, and and the, both, basically there's two different parts to it. There's the grants to states, and there's preschool. Um, but that was the single program that was tested this year for federal compliance. And again, no issues to report to you as far as compliance or controls. <clears throat> Before we move on, any questions on either the federal or the state grant audits from the board? All set, Mr. Okay. Um, the last report that I'd like to go through, and I'm not going to do a page by page, so please stop me at any point or just ask me your questions at any point. I just want to hit some highlights in terms of uh, the report. The independent auditor's report is on page one. It uh, goes on for three pages. The, um, the bottom line is that we have issued uh, our opinions on various opinion units listed on page two. Uh, and we have concluded that uh, the financial statements uh, th that we have in the report do uh, in all material respects um, present the uh, financial position and the activity of, of the town in accordance with generally accepted uh, accounting principles. <clears throat> there was one change in accounting principle during the year. That was the adoption of GASB statement number 74, financial reporting for post-employment benefits. And I'm going to show you the difference that that caused uh, to the report as, as I flip through the, uh, through the pages of the report. <clears throat> the report format is the same uh, as it's been in, in years past. Uh, the independent auditor's report is first. Management discussion and analysis, which is prepared by your finance department, is, is the next part. And it's followed by the basic financial statements. Uh, exhibit one on page 11 begins the, uh, the financial statements. This statement um, shows for all of your governmental activities uh, a statement of net position, which is your assets minus liabilities, and, and the result is your net position. Next year, there'll be some changes to this exhibit when we implement GASB 74 that I just referred to. One of the items there is um, the implementation of other post-employment benefit reporting. The liability associated with that, which is now about $14 million, will end up in the financial statements, whereas it is not in the financial statements currently. It's only in your disclosures. So next year, this, this statement will change a little bit. <clears throat> Exhibit three is the balance sheet for governmental funds. The, the headings there, general fund, capital projects, and sewer assessment, those are what we refer to as major funds, and we give an opinion on each of those funds. In looking at the general fund column, down towards the bottom, 
you'll see that the unassigned general fund fund balance is 20.3 million. Um, that's down about 900,000 uh, from from the previous year. <coughs> Your, un your assigned fund balance of 6.9 million is up significantly from the previous year, uh, and that is due to amounts that were um, utilized out of fund balance to balance uh, the uh, subsequent year's budget. Exhibit four on page 15 shows the total revenues and expenditures by major category for all of the, the governmental funds. <clears throat> I think the next thing I'd like to bring to your attention, the um, pension and uh, OPEB benefit trust funds on page 20 and 21. If you wanna see the, the detail for those uh, broken out between your pension trust funds and the retiree benefit trust fund, you would look back on page 93 and 94 and see the two separate funds that, uh, that combine to make those amounts on Exhibit 8 and Exhibit 9. <coughs> the notes to the financial statements are next. <coughs> There's um, pretty standard disclosures. Things are unchanged. Uh, from the previous years, a lot of definitions of the balance sheet um, items, detail for receivables, capital assets, significant uh, disclosures on uh, the debt issues of the town and the amortization uh, of, of the debt amounts going forward, short-term debt, any amounts outstanding for each uh, each bond uh, and note issue. On page 41, we begin with the um, pension fund disclosures. Several years ago, the pension, uh, pension disclosures changed much the same way that the OPEB uh, disclosures are now changing to be very similar to the what you're seeing for pensions. Page 43 shows two pension plans uh, of the town, the police employees and the volunteer fire department. The net pension liability for police is 8.3 million, volunteer is about 350,000. Uh, you can see from the percentages there that uh, both plans are about 73% funded. <clears throat> the town also participates in the municipal employee retirement system, which is run by the state of Connecticut. Uh, those disclosures begin on page 48. Uh, you have a number of people involved uh, with, with that plan, your current liability uh, for those retirees is 10.7 million. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And that, that shows up uh, in, in a few different places and I'll show you some charts um, that are 10 year comparative charts uh, a little later in the report. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> the teacher retirement disclosures on page 52 and, and continuing uh, indicate that uh, the state, although the town has no uh, current proportionate share, um, as you know, there was much discussion during the state budget uh, preparation this year about uh, having the towns begin contributing a portion of, of the liability for state, uh, for this teacher plan. Um, right now, the portion of the liability associated with your teachers um, that is assumed by the state is 91 million, and that's shown on page 53. 
The disclosures that I talked about under other post-employment benefits, they begin on page 55. Um, some of these disclosures have been uh, in your report, but those on page 57 under subsection E uh, are, are new disclosures. And the net OPEB liability of the town, which is basically your actuarially determined liability minus any assets you have put aside, determine what your net OPEB liability is. That's showing on page 57 of 14.5 million. Uh, you are about 50% funded, uh, which is a very positive, uh, positive thing. That liability currently is only disclosed in this footnote. It is not in your financial statements. Beginning next year, that $14 million liability will show up on Exhibit 1. Page 60 um, shows the breakdown of your fund balances by, by fund, by major type, um, non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned. The definitions that associate with each of those categories is in, in, in footnote number one. The next section of the report are required supplemental information. Uh, I'm not really going to spend any time with RSI 1 or 2. Those are your budget schedules. Uh, we're already three quarters of the way through the next year, so that's probably not too informative for you. Beginning on page 68, however, we have a number of pension schedules that uh, will over time show you side by side 10 years worth of data so that you can get uh, and build in your own mind the trend information for each each of the plans. So right now we're only in the, uh, looking at page 68, we're only in the fourth year of implementation of the standard, so we only have four columns, but this will build over time. You'll be able to look at, you know, where your assets are, uh, where the liability is going, uh, and, and what percentage you are uh, in terms of funding. So those schedules will show for each of your pension plans. There's also go, a, a schedule on page 70 that compares the actuarially determined contribution with the actual contributions made. Again, now that part of it, um, the information was is readily available and therefore we have 10-year uh, tables already built on those things. One of the required disclosures, page 72, is to uh, report out how the annual money weighted rate of return net of investment expense is for, the, for each plan. So here again, it'll tell you in terms of how well is um, the, the plan performing in terms of uh, the annual weighted money weighted return, money weighted rate of return. Page 74 shows the uh, teacher pension liability. Um, again, town portion zero, state portion um, growing. On page 76 is the municipal employee uh, system. Again, this is this plan is run by the state. Um, but you have a number of people in it and you do contribute to this each year. And again, you can see the trend information there. OPEB, uh, page 77. Since this standard is just starting this year, there's only one column. There, there will be uh, a column added each year. And you can see that the format of this is very similar uh, on RSI. 9 and 10, pages 77 and 78, very similar to the required supplemental information for the pension plans. And the rate of return on page 79 for that plan. Page 80, uh, just a comparative uh, balance sheet for the general fund. 
page 81, tax collector's report. Collection rate last year was about 98.3 or 4, somewhere in that range. Um, beginning on page 84 are all the other funds that the town uh, takes care of that are considered to be special revenue funds. There's a lot of a lot of funds between the town and the Board of Education that have their own special sources of revenue, uh, so they are accounted for and reported out separately. Exhibit C1 on page 90 and 91-92 are your self-insurance funds. You maintain three self-insurance funds, the medical fund, workers' comp, and heart and hypertension. You'll see that your uh, net position in the medical fund is about 13.6 million at the end of the year. Workers' comp, uh, 1.9 million, and heart and hypertension, about 300,000. I previously mentioned uh, pages 93, 94, the pension trust fund and the retiree benefit trust fund. If you're interested in how much of the assets are broken down between uh, between the two funds, and the last schedule of the report is the statement of debt limitation, uh, just a a required schedule by the state of Connecticut. Um, really doesn't tell you too much. Uh, the numbers are from a statute that's many, many, many years <coughs> old, um, and the, the limits are quite high. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, questions from the board on the audit? Charlie. Again, this year, though, we, I don't see any findings. I don't see any recommendations. So I think it's, again, very complimentary of our finance department, Jerry. Charlie, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate when um, we, you know, when we do up our required disclosures, our required, we're required to <clears throat> report out in writing to you if we uh, determine that there are material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, or if in uh, the conduct of the state and federal single audit if we find material non-compliance with the grants. We do have to report that to you in writing. Um, so uh, as I had indicated before, there was not. Uh, there are things that we do verbally talk to in, in terms of, uh, you know, improvements. Uh, that's generally done on a staff level. Mike talking either to the Board of Ed or to the Finance Department. Um, but we we did not issue a what's also known as a management letter with other less serious corrective action type things. Okay. Other, other questions, comments? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I did want to mention one more thing. Um, many of you, I've done presentations to before over the years. This will be my last one. Um, I have officially retired. Um, this is part of my wrap-up campaign here uh, to uh, do the last presentations. Uh, we do have a, a, a capable partner taking over um, for me uh, and, and Mike obviously too, uh, if you so choose to, uh, to stay with us. But uh, I wanted to thank all of you and thank the staff for uh, their cooperation over the years and um, just want to thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Jerry. Good luck in your retirement. Yeah, thank good you. luck, Jerry. Take care. Thanks, Mike and Jerry. Next is uh, agenda item number three is to consider and if appropriate approve a request from Public Works for the following transfer from regular wages and salaries, 43000 47 into overtime 25 526 into clothing and allowance 2715 into season one part time 15106. Uh, that's the first transfer. 
Second transfer is from rental equipment, 7,500 to road materials, 7,500. And the third is from road painting and signs, 12,000 to tree warden expense, 12,000. And the fourth request is from regular wages and salaries, 7,500, and to other purchase services, 7,500. Gary, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thanks. Okay, so uh, Public Works requesting the following budget transfers, uh, which by the way are all within the operating budget. Um, so, from the regular wages and salaries, uh, I'm going to put in uh, uniforms and clothing allowance. Um, we had to upgrade, upgrade department wide upgrade of uh, rain gear. Um, and that kind of put us a little bit behind. Uh, over time, um, <coughs> we have three months left, and uh, we still have a few events to go. So uh, we had some early snowstorms this year, some bad wind storms and everything. So we uh, kind of went over budget with the. Uh, over time. And okay, uh, hopefully we're through with the snow. I hope so. Uh, what about the rental and the road materials? Yeah, that was um, road materials. Uh, we've got uh, twenty one hundred twenty dollars and sixty eight cents left. Requesting seventy five hundred dollars uh, just for maintenance of uh, patching and repairing <coughs> potholes Thank you. for this quarter coming up. To get us through. There's a lot of potholes out there that can make the road safe. Okay. Uh, the third one, the tree warden. Yeah, we're going to take money from uh, road painting and signs. We had a lot of um, problem trees, hazard trees with all the uh, storms that we've had, even going back to that we had a bad storm in the fall uh, back in October. And then we had all these storms recently. Um, We've been really cleaning up a lot of trees around town. Okay, and the other purchase services are 7,500? Yeah, this is basically for um, curb replacement town-wide uh, due to winter plowing, um, catch basin cleaning for state requirements, and um, you know various emergency projects that will fall out of the scope of the department. Okay. Questions from Gary, Charlie. Gary, if you take forty-two thousand from regular wages and salaries for that, tech, will that make you short in that line item for the year, or will you still have enough no. left to meet? No, we're fine. No. Yeah, no, because uh, you have a, a vacancy there, which is greater than that. And you know, also workers' comp. You know, when somebody's out, part of that gets charged okay. for the workers' comp funds. Okay. Fine. Other questions? I'll well, move it, Jeff. Second. Moved by Jeff. Seconded by Bob. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Next is to hear requests from the Board of Fire Commissioners regarding their staffing plan and consider if appropriate, make a recommendation to the commission. With regards to applying for the staffing for adequate fire and emergency response, aka safer grant. Good evening, Chief and Commissioner. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm just going to, uh, the first document is presentation tonight. We'll be uh, cognizant of your busy schedule tonight, and we'll try to get through this. It's quickly as possible while we're still trying to allow adequate time for any questions and uh, discussion with the board. The uh, first document, like I said, is the presentation. The remaining documents are some supporting uh, documentation, of, some documentation of interest. No way to email this to Victor, is there? We certainly, uh, Sean could work on that while we okay. talk. Okay. For sure. You still with us, Victor? I'm with you, Joe. 
All right. Thank you. I'm too late. All right. Commissioner uh, Massey is uh, the chairman of the board is away, but uh, Commissioner Clem is with us tonight, and I can say that Commissioner Clem has been a commissioner longer than I've been a firefighter, so she's well aware of, of the needs of the department. Um, what we'd like to do tonight, you, some of you might want to sit over here because we're going to uh, oh, sure. take the opportunity to show you on the uh, board behind you um, how the fire department is currently staffed. You want to sit things, over there? Yeah, if you, if you could uh, uh, sit over here or over uh, on the side where you can see, that would uh, probably be more. Sure. So as the... Uh, the quote on the board says, nobody calls the fire department and says, send me two firemen in a, in a pickup truck. In three minutes, they want five brain surgeon decathlon champions to come and solve all their problems. Um, and, and below it, it says the expectations of the fire service has changed. Well, the expectations of the public of the fire service has changed. While we still call ourselves the fire department, our um, responsibilities are, are great. The um, the uh, next slide will show us, uh, you know, this is just a representation of some of the standards and regulations that govern the fire department and how we staff and how we're supposed to staff, but ultimately a community decides um, how they're going to provide for fire and rescue services. Uh, Brantford has, has always supported us and we appreciate that, but um, we're at kind of a crossroads and I, I think what we'll show tonight is, is why um, we think it's an appropriate time to apply for, for additional funding to staff two more full-time firefighters. Um, one of the things that um, happened in Brantford over the years is in 1991 we took over the emergency medical services of the town. Brantford Ambulance was a separate entity at the time and it was decided because there was a lot of duplication of efforts um, that we would merge the two departments. This um, this happened prior to, to my uh, starting with Brantford. I started in 1995, but um, it, it worked very well at the time. There was good balance between the two, but as EMS has become um, the greater driver of our calls, the fire protection parts um, kind of fallen off balance, and I think we'll be able to explain that as we move on. So some of the things that we do as emergency medical service provider today is not just provide an ambulance ride to the hospital. We provide, we basically bring the emergency room from the hospital into the home. We treat people on scene with all the uh, items represented in the photograph are the medications we carry, some of the specialized tools that we carry, such as quick trach kits, endotracheal intubation. We can use a bone drill to uh, access into, uh, into uh, osseous access for delivering medications to the vasculature of the bones, and many other uh, things that we have to do. The, um, we have a, quite a group of complex patients that can be found at home, uh, bariatric patients, pa patients with special needs. Um, there's longer turnaround times at the hospital these days because of all the specialized stuff that we're doing, the greater oversight, the greater amount of, um, of documentation that needs to be provided between the hospital and the paramedics so that it could be reviewed for quality assurance. And just the increased number of, of uh, healthcare facilities and elderly population we have is the larger, is the driver of all of what we do to provide emergency medical services. And we now have five ambulances as uh, presented earlier in the budget process. Sean, if you could uh, show the next slide. So everybody knows what the fire department does as far as putting out fires, and um, you know that we're going to talk more about what we need to do that as, as we go on the presentation. But these are some of the other services that the department provides. And we provide confined space um, rescue services, rope rescue services, marine and water rescue, trench rescue, hazardous materials, collapse, and vehicle and machinery. Each one of these is a specialized um, group of uh, skill sets that need to be regularly trained on and practice, but the same group of firefighters are uh, that we have in town need to have a lot of this specialized knowledge. And all of these pictures that you see on the screen before you are really um, our firefighters either actually providing these services or training um, to provide these services. In the lower left-hand side is an actual rescue from Main Street where we had to. Uh, 
simultaneously put water on the fire while rescuing three people from the third floor walk-up. Um, what is not represented in some of those slides, however, is the um, one of the most important things that this department does is the prevention and code enforcement aspect. Code enforcement is, is prevention, and we prevented a lot of uh, incidents over the years by doing uh, sending our fire marshals into the community and doing their inspections for hundreds of multifamily apartments, um, multifamily homes, assembly occupancies, healthcare, daycare, educational, and business occupancies. So that's what we do every day, um, and here's what, um, how the incidents have been driven in comparison to our, our staffing. So this chart starts in the um, 2002 time frame, and in 2002, we were down in the, um, in the 2000 call range, and as you can see, um, as of the end of last year, 2017, we did 5,992 calls for service. We had seven firefighters per shift in, in the early 2000s. We went to eight in 2005. We've had eight um, uh, up until the present year. In um, fiscal year 16, we began the part-time program, which was part of this three-year staffing plan that you have before you that um, you all had received previously, but I just thought it was important to bring it um, to your attention that this would have been the third year of the staffing plan. And the third year really um, was designed to allow us to take two full-time firefighters off of an ambulance to put them in a light rescue. And we're going to discuss the, the plan for that again at, toward, toward um, the latter part of the program. But um, what we've learned over two years of part-time staffing as well, it's, it's met a lot of our goals. It's um, very difficult to manage that many part-time personnel and to really fully implement the third year of the plan. We would need that many more people to manage. And um, with the part-time staff, a lot of these shifts go unfilled. So if you have a shift to fill but you can't get the people to fill it, um, it, it doesn't really help us out. Uh, another thing um, that this chart shows you is the corresponding decline in the um, number of active volunteer firefighters that we've had during this same period of time. We have had a um, approximately 40% decline in the overall number of active volunteer firefighters that we have. Our volunteers are second to none, but they can only do so much. I think one of the things that people need to know about our volunteer firefighters is they're on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week as they can provide that service. Um, they also are asked to volunteer for every community event in town from parades to uh, festivals to fireworks to everything else and it, and it does take a lot of their time. The next slide just talks about that Brantford is not alone when it comes to the number of volunteer firefighters that we have in the declines. Um, I've provided some information for you. You could read on uh, again um, when you have a, more of an opportunity. It just talks about the challenges nationwide, and Connecticut's no stranger to this trend. So, how does that affect us in, in Brantford? This is how Brantford currently deploys its resources. Um, the um, map of Brantford has a icon over each one of our station locations so starting at company two which is the small station on Main Street engine two adds uh, 471 dispatches per year I mean about 60% um, of their non EMS response and so they have currently 12 active members at MP Rice and MP Rice is is our sec you know our most the busiest volunteer company um, as far as call volume. Next we move into Short Beach, which is Engine Company 4, and they're uh, dispatched to 450 dispatches a year. Now just keep in mind that a lot of those dispatches are, um, Company 4's response district goes all the way up to Route 1 and East Haven Line, and Brantford Hills, and all the way east to um, past the high school and some of Mill Plain Road. So they have a rather large response district. And um, again, they're, um, they have about 13 active members currently. We'll move into uh, Stony Creek, and Stony Creek is Engine Company 5. Stony Creek has 238 dispatches a year, um, and they have a 26% non-EMS response and 42% um, 
um, response with Rescue 5. So a lot of the calls that they're dispatched to, they cover with the light rescue as opposed to the engine company. And they currently have 24 active members. They are the largest overall number of members in town. The um, next station is, is Station 9. Station 9, um, as, as you we talked about in the um, earlier presentation that uh, we're building the new station for Engine 9, they, um, again, between the two uh, units, they have uh, dispatches in the hundreds, they have 13 active members, and um, strategically located in the southern central portion of town for uh, a good response from that station. But some of the things that have happened over the years, again, are the call volume's going up, and while a lot of the calls that, that we ask the volunteers to assist with are medical emergencies, that's the largest driver of our, our call volume. Um, but we've, um, we've lost quite a few volunteer companies over the year. So Pine Orchard Company um, 6 is one of the companies that no longer is uh, a viable com company. It's, uh, it's no longer in existence. Uh, we do use the facility to house the antique fire apparatus, and that's uh, really its only function. So headquarters is where most of our activity happens, and um, out of headquarters was Engine Company 8, the volunteer company, which closed in 2004, and Aerial Company 1, that closed in 2005. So there's three whole volunteer companies that have disbanded um, just in the last 22 and a half years, and um, at the same time, the overall number of volunteers has, has declined per company. So this just uh, now gets into the career staff. So Brantford Fire Department is a combination fire department, as you know, a career and volunteer. Our career staff is um, covers Engine 1, Medic 1, um, Medic 2, Car 6, and Rescue 1. And it'll be a little bit easier to explain the um, how we deploy our, st our career staff in the next uh, coming slide, but as you can see, these uh, each unit is in the 1800s as far as actual responses. Those are those aren't just dispatches that don't go unanswered. Every one of those is an incident that we responded to. Somebody's uh, call for help one way or the other. Um, so our current staffing and deployment is divided up uh, like this, as you can see in the slide here. We have engine one which is the only career fire engine. This is the only suppression unit that is staffed by career firefighters. The other, um, so three, three members are on engine one. They're led by a, a deputy chief in car six who's responsible for town-wide operations 24 hours a day. And then the, the other four members are divided up into two advanced life support ambulances. The ladder truck, which formerly was volunteer, is no longer staffed um, by any type of per permanent personnel. It's staffed as we have personnel available. And as we move through some slides, we're just going to show you uh, some of the way that the Brantford Fire Department manages our calls. We manage our calls on a one call at a time basis. So depending on what that call is, um, that's how we will respond to that call. So for a structure fire um, during the day where our part-time ambulance is staffed, this is how um, we are deployed. So all our firefighters will respond. If everybody's here, we take one paramedic off of Medic 1, we put them on the engine. The engine goes out a properly staffed four-person response vehicle. The other ambulance is left um, completely um, on staffed, left at headquarters, and those two members take the ladder truck. And that's how we would respond to a structure fire when the part-time ambulance is not available. When that ambulance is available, we would staff, um, we would have those two uh, members would, would be available for EMS calls. So, you know, after that, after that, after hours, if we were to have a building fire, we basically have no ambulance coverage. Um, in the firehouse, we call in people from outside. So that's how we, we respond to that type of, uh, of staffing. For, uh, there we go. So a motor vehicle accident or, or a rescue call um, outside of having the Medic 3 available, this is how we 
currently staffed. Three firefighters are an engine, which is the normal staffing for that engine. Two firefighters and then the deputy, and then that leaves two firefighters to be available for whatever else comes in. Their primary responsibility is the, is the, is the next ambulance, but if a fire call were to come in, they would, back, they would be in the, the reserve engine and um, staff that way. Um, one of the things that was publicly commented and, and a little bit of a misconception um, during the presentation for Station 9 is, you know, that there's 33 firefighters here seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And the fact is, is that we have 36 career firefighters, including the staff positions, but our normal, because we have to cover a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week shift schedule, there's only eight on duty at any given time and then the part-timers. And this is how those eight firefighters are, are deployed during those hours. So one of the things, um, Sean, if you could just show um, a marine incident too, and um, so one of the things that uh, the career staff also does along with Stony Creek is if there is a marine incident, um, we also staff the boat. And while um, primarily that responsibility was covered by <coughs> volunteers in Stony Creek and still is, especially for the Thimble Islands, um, they are backed up. Um, we just have such a large coastline and so such a heavy uh, risk for marine incidents. This is the, um, the staffing model we use. So when this happens, again, we're, we're dropping an engine and we're, um, we have left behind two firefighter paramedics to cover whatever else comes in. The, um, the important thing to talk about when you're talking about call volume and how we staff and how we respond is that um, these 5,996 calls don't call, come in one at a time, and they're not planned to come in one at a time. One of the things that happens is that um, our call volume is, is um, often overlapping calls, where multiple calls are happening simultaneously. So we'll go, you know, sometimes several hours with not having, turning a wheel at any of the stations um, or headquarters. But then all of a sudden we'll get boom, 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 uh, call after call after call, and we call those overlapping calls. Um, this is a, a report that generates a list of overlapping calls, and out of the 5,996 calls that we did last year, um, over 3,000 of them were overlapping, or greater than 50% of the time, um, we have two calls happening simultaneously before the other call um, stops. And it, it, it's a little bit difficult, but you can look at it. Um, these large highlighted areas are the areas where um, all of these calls happen simultaneously. So we often do multiple calls, and that's, that's where we start to have a little bit of increased risk, especially when it comes to our EMS uh, call volume. And because the ambulances transport out of town, we're, every time we lose those two full-time ambulances, they're taking two of our firefighter paramedics to the hospital for a, a minimum of an hour to an hour and a half. So. Um, what do we need to staff for a, a structure fire? So in an average single family dwelling fire, the initial first alarm assignment is, um, while these regulations, the National Fire Protection Association uh, 1710 and 1720 talk about the staffing, just our own um, experience and common sense in, in how we would respond to these things uh, mirrors these standards. So we try to comply with the standards. These Standards are consensus standards in that they're not the law. They don't tell us we have to do this, but to be, you know, have a safe and effective fire attack, this is what um, we try to follow. So this um, this is just a single. This this model is just based on a 2,000 square foot Cape Cod house or any single family dwelling we have in town. And as you can see, it takes um, 12 firefighters. Um, to actually engage in the firefighting activities, and these things have to happen simultaneously. We have um, firefighters who stretch the line to put out the fire. We have firefighters to start to search the house for potentially trapped occupants. We have to throw ladders. We have to ventilate the structure. We have to have a backup line. Um, we have a firefighter rescue team standing by in case something happens to us. And we also need an EMS team standing by. And so all of the support functions, the command function, the pump operator, and the water supply add to that. And the standard is, is that within four minutes of 
receiving, the, you know, the travel time from after you receive the alarm, you respond to that alarm and you leave the firehouse, your suppression unit should be on scene with a minimum of four firefighters within the first four minutes, and within eight to nine minutes, all of the rest of these people should be on scene to, uh, to manage the incident. So that's the, the, the proper staffing, and while the good news is structure fires and, and fires in general are down through our um, efforts and um, in code prevention building and, and uh, all, of, all of the like, they still happen as well as a lot of the uh, earlier mentioned rescue type calls that require their manpower intensive, their skill intensive, and so we, we, really, um, we really are at the point now where the EMS side of the house has taken over the, to the degree where while our ambulances are meeting our call volume and we're, we're doing our own transports, it's taking all the resources we have to do that and there's not a lot of resource left to do the other things that the fire department's called upon to do. And one of the things to keep in mind is when you call 911, you don't want us at your neighbor's house. So if we're sitting in this firehouse doing nothing, uh, or we're training or we're doing our skill stuff, we are doing our jobs. We're here for when you call. And if we're not here um, when you call, then that, you know, we're not um, able to provide this service in a timely fashion. We certainly cover a lot of stuff for mutual aid, but um, it's not the way to staff a fire department. So what we're going to talk about is, is the increase in staffing. Like I said, we really started this um, it actually started when uh, Chief Ahern and Chief Heffernan presented the, the need back in uh, 2009. Um, the board did allocate uh, money in the overtime line item for covering a lot of the extra things that, that we have to do. And um, it, it got us to a certain point, and then we started the three-year staffing plan. We've added the part-timers, and it, it has done its job, and, and as you're going to see with the ambulance revenue, you know, we, we put the people in the ambulances, they go meet the needs of the community, and we bill for that, the revenue comes back to us, but that's what we're able to do right now. We're, we're, we're an ambulance service, and we need to, to kind of get back in balance. So one of the things that we, we proposed in the, in the three-year staffing plan was to staff a light rescue truck, which would allow us two um, additional full-time fire, firefighter paramedics um, we hope to do this by staffing the ambulances with more of the part-time model, but again, in the third year of the plan, it gets very cumbersome to have all of those, those um, part-timers. While it's certainly more cost-effective, it presents a lot of other challenges. So the plan is um, to increase staffing. What, what we did, um, what we'd like to do is apply for the SAFER grant. The SAFER grant is the uh, Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Plan. It's a federal grant. It's a three-year grant. Um, years one and two cover 75% of the cost. The town um, covers 25%. And uh, as you can see, these are the, um, the uh, budgetary responsibilities. Year three, it goes to 35 uh, government, 65 Branford. And then our responsibility and our, our budget does go up. Sean, if you could go to the um, next slide, we'll talk about we'll talk about the what the plan um, is intended to do. So we talked about our responsibilities. We talked about our problems meeting those challenges and all and all the things that we're able to do. So what this plan would do, it's designed to reduce the frequency that we have um, so many firefighter paramedics out of town who's just transporting patients and allowing them to be available for the um, higher level type calls and the, and the firefighting calls. Um, our goal is to improve service and increase safety for both the community and the firefighters by reducing injuries. One of the things that we don't do well and we haven't done well is with all of these EMS calls, we really only send two people in an ambulance. And a lot of the higher level calls, from chest pain calls to difficulty breathing calls to certainly cardiac arrest, seizures, and, and a lot of those higher level medical calls, they require more than just two people to make it safe and efficient. And so having these firefighters in the light rescue, they would respond and we would, we would start to provide a much better care. Um, prior to combining both ambulance and Fire department back in the early 90s, we did provide more of a first responder for the higher level calls along with the ambulance. And then um, we ended up, just because we didn't have enough people to constantly run that engine on every medical call, 
Um, we started to back that off to just the cardiac arrest calls and the unconscious calls and the seizure calls. But we're doing a disservice by not providing the care with the appropriate amount of people at the home for these higher level medical calls. And then you don't need that many people, the ambulance transports and that, that unit can be available. Um, so having that unit, um, you know, part of it is lifting, carrying and moving all this stuff we have to carry now. So the idea is that we would also reduce some of these injuries that we uh, were unfortunately one of the more frequent uh, departments to have people out for back pain and, um, you know, that type of muscular and skeletal injuries. So we hopefully also reduce the need for the only career fire engine. Um, I explained earlier that we have one career fire engine, one staffed fire engine. That's been that way since the career staff pretty much started. Um, there's been one career fire engine, but it's out doing a lot of medicals now. So if we could reduce the amount of time that engine's doing medicals, it's more um, available to do the fire. It's not as uh, responding to as many emergencies reduce wear and tear on the big expensive piece of apparatus. And then the um, having these, again, more firefighters on shift increases the likelihood that the town's only ladder truck will, will get out when we need it. Um, and the yeah, overall goal of improving response time and reliability. And then there is also the potential to uh, increase revenue by not having to pass calls. We, We've reduced that greatly with the part-time staffing we currently have, but we're still passing uh, a small percentage of the calls. And what we have always done is, if that next ambulance call is the call that we have to do, we'll take staff from upstairs, we'll put them in an ambulance, we'll take this staff from this, we'll move them there, and they'll go and do that medical call. So here's just a, a little bit, of, and, and you've all seen this before, but I think it's important to talk about the revenue. Um, the revenue, as you can see, has been pretty much on par with what we um, base the revenue uh, income for taxation. So you give us a target based on historicals. We try to be a little conservative because we've taxed on it, so we want to make sure that you know we hit that number. And so we always have been slightly above it. But as you can see, once we started answering all these EMS calls we did, that revenue went way above the target. So um, this year, you know, we, we periodically um, will be asked to increase that, that goal in, in this year's budget. It would increase 90000 over last year's budget. And I think we're even going to do better than, than last year. So that's a little bit of what I meant um, during the budget presentation as, you know, the money's already coming in the door this side. Um, at, at some point, it's going to flatten out until call volume goes up again significantly. But right now, this is what we're faced with. Uh, a ton of EMS calls. We're doing them, we're, we're in the ambulances, we're getting them done, but we're, we're not um, doing a lot of the other stuff that we're supposed to be doing. Um, a little bit about the budget offset and how the ambulance revenue offsets the cost of this department as far as the operating budget is concerned. This just really does show the operating budget, but over a six year um, period, when you apply the additional ambulance revenue above taxation, any um, additional money we've been asked to make and compare that to the previous year's budget. In the last six years, we've had about a 0.2% uh, cost year-to-year -year increase to the uh, to the taxpayer. Um, so we're, we're happy we're able to subsidize um, a, to a great extent the uh, cost of providing the service that we provide. So this is, um, this was the original budget proposal that um, we had caught, came in with to, to spark the conversation about the increased staffing. And as you can see, um, it covers all of the, uh, all of the increases in the operating side of the budget. It would have left us with an overall 13% um, increase in the over, you know, in our budget with a, um, I think it was a, uh, 13% in the salaries, but overall it was a 9.6% uh, increase in the overall budget. Um, and this was the cost of hiring those additional eight-time, full-time firefighter personnel. And so um, the difference between what we ended up asking for to, to um, stay more in line with the three-year part-time staffing plan is about $175,300. Um, what this doesn't show, and it doesn't come out of my budget, is the um, expenses on the benefit side. And so, um, Jim, help me out, but I think it's in the neighborhood of 32000 per 
per employee for the fire department for benefit and, and uh, yeah, so it might actually be a little higher to take the overhead, but yeah, so it'll be higher than that. But. A little bit higher than that. So, so that's the part that it doesn't show. Probably another three hundred thousand um, dollars per firefighter. You know, to it, that would be added to the budget that is not presented as far as my operating budget. But certainly want to you know, in full disclosure, that this is not. There's more to the cost of full timers, and I know you guys understand that, but for the benefit of the public. So, because we know that adding firefighters is expensive, um, we we feel that if if we can get the town to wrap their head around the need and, and agree with the need for this, that the opportunity to take advantage of the opportunity to apply for the SAFER grant. Of course, no guarantee that we would receive it where it's a competitive grant. We'll certainly give it our, our all, but that's um, what we're asking the board to allow us to do. Um, just a little bit about what it won't do. It's not designed to replace or phase out any needs of our dedicated volunteers. Um, it's not going to close any fire stations, and it's not going to increase any response times. And that's uh, it in a nutshell. Thanks, Chief. Let me step back up here. Kind of been a little more than a nutshell. Thanks, Chief, for the presentation. Um, We have questions on the presentation at this time, Charlie. The chief, on the current eight eight people every day, you know, on the ship, are they all paramedics? Um, the majority of them are paramedics. Um, we still have a few people that were before um, before we required everybody to be a paramedic. The requirement for everybody to be a paramedic came in um, in, I believe it was nine, in the 94 time frame, 93. It was part of the merger. Um, so eventually will those that are still EMSs or uh, Right, so there? everybody's a, a minimum of an EMT, which is a basic, EMTs, yeah. a basic um, you know, provider of emergency care. However, um, you know, in the future, as staffing increases in the fire department, there is the opportunity to not have it, have to have everybody be a paramedic. Well, it's it's desirable. It's also very um, expensive to have everybody be a paramedic. So the the goal would be to maybe reduce the number of paramedics necessary. But right now, because of our community and the and the way we operate, um, having that those paramedics on staff makes things a lot easier. So, uh, a couple. Um, is the safer grant for eight or nothing, or can you apply for one or two or three? So that's a, that's a great question. So the safer grant is is a competitive grant that's designed to make uh, the goal of the grant is to make you that much more effective in meeting the standard of NFPA 1710, which is the deployment of proper resources for firefighting and emergency services. While you can't apply for any number of firefighters. The likelihood, um, because it's competitive, they're going to look and say, how much more is it going to help Brantford by giving them one personnel as opposed to the the request that that we would be asking for, which would be t which would be eight, but it's two firefighters per shift. Okay. So this allows us to do is put that additional unit on the road. If we have one firefighter, one additional firefighter, well, it's going to be a help to the fire department. It's, we're, we're not able to put one person in a unit and send them out by themselves. It's not a safe way to deploy your resources. Firefighters operate as, as a team-based group of people. Um, and allowing that extra unit to be on the road will meet all those goals and keep the, uh, the fire engine more available. It's still going to be on going on medicals, believe me, but it's not going to go on as many if we, uh, if we staff a light rescue truck. If you were to get these... Uh eight new firefighters is the plan or the rejection on cost to include them training to be a paramedic um, what we would do is as we have in the past we endeavor to hire people who have already been through the training when that's not appropriate we hire um, in limited amounts those who we will send to paramedic school 
Um, and so those costs are in the uh, other line items are kind of already there. We would have to manage that um, to be, we're, we wouldn't hire eight non-firefighter paramedics and send them all to school at once. Um, that, would be, that would not be um, a, an efficient way to do things, but um, we would probably send a portion of them. And that, right, that so you cost think there are been, some EMTs around available? Should you get the, the, the safer grant that our fire department could hire? Yes. Yes, and, and so what we're, what we're always doing, we, we got involved in what's called the uh, Connecticut Consortium, which is a group of departments that came together to test and, and hire and recruit. It's given us a, a much wider reach uh, while we're competing with these other fire departments. You know, we, we've been fairly successful in retaining people. One of the, the nice things about being a firefighter paramedic in the town of Brantford is, you know, you, you're responsible for a wide range of things. You don't just do one job. You know, being a paramedic, you're a rescue technician, you're a firefighter, and we do send you to school, and, and, uh, and you know, we expect a lot of the people that we have here. Listen, when you did your budget presentation, as I recall, uh, to increase the staffing on the ambulances, it was a, there was an increase of about 304,500, something like that? Yep. Okay, and what, what is the new increase? I, I don't have a chance to look it over. So, to, the increase that we asked for in this year's budget request gives us um, a greater coverage of the part-time hours, and it also increases that single firefighter that we staff in, in the light rescue truck that we, you know, during the daytime, we don't mind putting one people person, and that's what we can do. So it has been making our calls more efficient and our turnaround time better. But um, if we were to hire the eight, this year's request would be absorbed into that. So it wouldn't be in addition to, okay. uh, it would be this year's request and then the difference, which um, if you, um, I had it up there, it's it, just on the operating side, it's it's in the neighborhood of $176,000 difference in just the operating side costs. And then there's the benefit costs that we talked about. So I'm a little confused. Like you asked for a, a, a 340,500 more, what would be the incremental cost to add eight more? What would be the difference between this page and what he's asked for? Yeah, so if you look on, uh, Sean's going to look at it right now. Page 18. 18. So that's, that's the cost of adding, because we're these are new firefighters. That they're being paid at the 70% salary rate with their um, associated benefit, you know, replacement benefit costs, which are in these other line okay. items. So they are going to cost... On top of the 300000 they would be $176,000 more just in the salary line items, and then we would have to pay their benefits as well. So, that's, only so the, the, that's only the first year, though, in the, yeah. uh, we, we only covered, what, 25%? Well, you're budgeting 100%. Yeah, yeah, this is 100% in the budget. 100%. So okay. yeah. what this points to is we probably have a lot more questions than we need to be able to get into tonight. Okay. Yep. We're starting, and I think we have a, all have a lot yeah. of questions. Okay. And there's a lot of detail that we may want to see in addition to this. So what we're suggesting here tonight is a good presentation, good opener. Um, I think we have a lot of questions as I pointed out. We can ask a few more tonight, but what my thinking is is that we, we come back for a special meeting just to really spend more time in advance of your uh, time frame to apply for the grant, which I believe is the end of April. So. Um, and, and so what we can do, the, the grant actually opened today. Um, it closes April 27th. That's, um, that's when it has to, that's the deadline for submission. 27th, okay. And um, we can, you know, we can work on the grant. We can do everything we need to do. We can be ready to push the submit button prior to that, should the board agree. Um, so it's not going to, you know, we just have to be ready to do that by the 27th. That's fine. We can work in parallel on this. Um, I think that's fair. Um, question, Bob, you have one or, or Lorraine or Jeff and I'll hold off and I'll make a recommendation when you have a special meeting. Yeah, okay. So, okay. so there's a recommendation that's in form of sure. motion. Oh, sure. um, and you have a motion. The second, the second. Okay. And, and I know, but I'm okay. taking okay. a motion right now. Thank okay. you. So, um, discussion on the motion. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. I don't necessarily need to take questions from the field, but you are who? 
Sir? Mark Riccio uh, from the RTN. Want to come up? Can I speak? Yeah, sure. So obviously this will probably come to us eventually, potentially, I would think, right? To the RTN? That's correct. So a couple of questions. I should know this question. Uh, how many personnel do you have right now? There are 36 uh, paid firefighters. Four of those are staff, including myself and Chief Heffern. Okay. Um, so we have a we have a fire prevention inspector. We have a deputy chief who is in charge primarily of training and, and administrating all the training requirements and record keeping. And we also have um, the fire marshals, Chief Heffern, who's my assistant chief, and myself. The remaining career staff is is divided into four shifts um, to cover the 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they are, that makes eight per shift. By the way, it was a great presentation. Thank you for sharing that stuff. Um, so you're looking for basically a 25 percent increase. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I'm looking at the cost. Looking at the cost benefit. How many people are dying, and how many fires are we not putting out because we don't have the maybe the staff requirements that you have today? So that, that's it's a, a simple question, but probably a hard answer. It is a hard answer because the the truth is is that no matter how um, stretched we are, we find a way to answer the call. It's just whether we can answer that call in a timely fashion or not. And so while um, I'm not prepared to answer to statistics about how many people may have died, we all know that fires are down, but they still occur. Um, and we do get to um, sometimes where we're extremely thin. My job is to try to um, ask for the resources necessary before um, we're not able to answer those calls. And that's kind so of I'm, where we are right now. I'm looking for empirical data. Sure. Uh, okay. it, it's very so difficult. We're going to get a presentation yeah. to the board. This is not a, I understand. part of the public hearing. We'll have an opportunity to, to ask Correct. those questions. But I'm just, you know, just asking some general questions. I understand. So we'll get that information. We'll deal with that at our special meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions with regard to the presentation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is to consider an if appropriate approved request from transfer from finance director. Have we seen anything? What's happening? Yeah, actually, I have a, uh, a letter in the package. Uh, Got it. Yeah. Okay, so this is two transfer requests. Jim, you want to go over these? Yeah, yeah I will, sure. Uh, the first one is, uh, I just want to make sure some of the uh, copies are the type of one. It's 2200 from contingency and uh, then 2200 to uh, the equipment account. This is Willoughby Wallace Library. You may recall in her presentation, uh, she talked about the need to uh, fund a uh, defibrillator at the library. Uh, so if uh, and if you were to approve this transfer out of contingency, uh, the contingency balance after this transfer would be 727709. Uh, so if you were to fund this transfer out of contingency, uh, that would be a request that you can uh, reduce in uh, next year's budget. Okay. Questions on this? Somebody want to move? I'll move it, Joe. I'll second. Move second by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, thanks. Next. Uh, the other one was uh, a topic uh, we discussed uh, a couple times. One, uh, when the actuary was here and we were talking about changing the uh, rate of return assumptions down to 6.5%, uh, that resulted in an uh, increase in the annual contribution. Uh, at the last meeting when we talked about budget considerations, uh, one of the things I suggested was that we take uh, a million dollars uh, that out of that was previously earmarked uh, for the TRB um, and use that to um, reduce the liability in the uh, police pension plan. You may recall that it improved the funding ratio, but more importantly, as related to the budget, it actually reduced the uh, contribution by about eighty-one thousand dollars per year, and so uh, that that would allow you to. Uh, to make that change for next year's budget if you were to approve this transfer. Okay, questions on this from Jim? I'll move it. A second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
Thanks, Jim. Okay, next on our agenda is a budget work session. So before we get started on this, I just want to do a recap. Again, we've had budget requests. We've conducted our public hearings, and um, we've had budget requests of 113 million. $34,993, which represents $1,222,000 above the current budget. The net to be raised from taxation as proposed was $100,223,872, representing a mill rate of 28.88, which was four tenths, 400 basis points increase of the mill rate or a 1.4% increase. The board, as you know, the board um, has conducted its public hearings. We've had other meetings and studied it ourselves and worked with the finance department. We've come up with some suggested uh, changes to that budget, and we will walk through each budget uh, and all the capital items and then make a final recommendation to the RTM tonight. Uh, with that, ordinarily, unless the board would rather we do something different, we'll start with the Board of Ed, both operating and capital. And that budget is on page 55. There is a suggestion number of a reduction of 109,000. Uh, portion of that is uh, for, to fund medical claims at 100%. I think that represents about $44,000. And the balance is a, uh, uh, a balancing number that I believe comes out to about a uh, 10% of the request, if I'm not mistaken. Um, comments on this budget? Somebody want to move it? So move. Oh, I'll second, Joe. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Jim, you have that number of uh, total Board of Ed budget, I believe is 56779223 Yes. Okay, um, we'll go on to Board of Ed Capital. I find it. Okay. Yep, Board of Ed Capital, a um, couple changes. On equipment and services, there was a request for 15,000 for equipment. That's suggested numbers to reduce that to 7,500. Uh, I'll go through the other changes unless somebody wants to go independently. Um, I believe on the infrastructure uh, building code compliance uh, reduction from 25,000 to 15,000. Let me put the total Board of Ed capital at 950620 correct? Somebody want to move that? I'll move that. Second. Seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that takes care of the Board of Ed for now. And we will start now at the top of the budget, which is on... Page 10, legislative, no suggested changes, request 18,140. I'll move it. I'll move it. Been moved and seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is executive, no suggested changes, 359,834. So moved. Moved by Bob. Second. Taken by Charlie. 
Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next is Board of Finance. Uh, recommended change to add six thousand dollars i believe to uh the actuarial, actuarial services so that would be a total of ninety one thousand six oh three for total budget i move it Is that correct yep. second it's been moved seconded by charlie all in discussion all in favor aye, aye. 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 Okay. next is Fiscal services. Um, we had don't have a number here, but we had recommended that uh, or to consider um, to increase regular wages and salaries. I believe that has a 2.5 percent increase in there, Jim. Is that correct? Yes. For your yeah. So. Catherine, you're going to have to give me a number or somebody. Uh, what the discussion at the informal discussion was to increase our finance director's salary by 3.5% instead of 2.5%, but I don't have that number. Um, somebody is working on that number? Catherine Would that be uh, forty four ten? Grandfather would have done it in his head. I know, I know. <laughs> he would have yelled at me too. I think it's forty-four fifty-two. Um, we 44 can come back 52? for a, for a total increase, not thirty-one eighty, forty-one fifty-two. So it's a difference of uh, minus forty-four fifty-two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Plus twelve seventy-two. Plus twelve seventy-two. That would make the department total 449, 714. 449, what is it? 714. 714. Uh, okay, somebody want to move I'll that? Move that. Second. Moved, seconded by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is assessor. No recommended changes. Four hundred twenty-seven thousand four hundred four. I'll move it. <coughs> Been moved and seconded by Bob. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is Board of Assessment Appeals. Thirteen thousand three forty-nine. No recommended changes. I'll move it, Joe. Been moved. I second. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is tax department. Original request of 558,308. Uh, recommended reduction of 140,000 on the tax refunds. Refund line item, making that line item $200,000. That would make the total budget at 418,308. 4, 18, Thanks, Jim. Somebody want to move it? I'll move it. Second. Bob's moved it. Jeff seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is town clerk. No, the 255,748. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Second. Been moved. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is legal services. 335,000. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Then Second. Moved by Charlie, seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Next is labor relations, 62,500. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Moved by Bob. Second. Second by Jeff. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And for the audience as well, Victor is on the, on the line, as I mentioned. Uh, he would be chiming in if he disagreed. That was the arrangement instead of voting on every single one. So that, That's correct, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Vector. Just checking in with you. <laughs> ne Next is probate court, 12,550. No recommended changes. I move it. Been moved. Second. Second by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is elections, 165,592. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved by Bob. I'll second it. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is planning and zoning, $304,215. No recommended changes. So I'll move it. Moved by Jeff. Seconded by second. Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, 8,877. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Second. Moved by Charlie. Seconded by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is economic development, 15,185. No recommended changes. I move it. Moved by Bob. Seconded by Jeff. Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next in my wetlands, $127,086. No recommended changes. Been moved um, by the Bob. Yeah. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is municipal buildings, $991,178. No recommended changes. I move it down. Been moved by Jeff, time. seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is, I, is Bay, Brantford Cable Television, $7,200. No recommended changes. So moved. Been moved by Bob, seconded by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is IT, budget, information technology. We have a couple of suggested changes here. Reduce hardware by $1,000 to 41,886. And the reason for that is uh, there's gonna be a corresponding reduction in the request for the police department for a fifth car. Um, sixth car. Uh, sixth car. Sixth car, okay. Um, and technology acquisitions, likewise, uh, reduction of 18625 uh, Can I have that total budget? Um, yes, it's uh, 799630 799630 Thanks. It's probably somewhere here, isn't it? Yeah. I'll move it. Oh, moved by Charlie. Second. Second by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is human resources. No recommended changes, $289,812. Somebody want to move it? I'll move it. I'll second. Moved by Charlie, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next on public safety, police request of Six hundred six million four hundred forty-seven thousand three ninety-nine. Suggested reduction of regular wages and salaries by sixty-six thousand nine hundred twenty-two dollars, which represents reducing the funding for the captain to twenty-five percent of the year. That total budget uh, would be. At uh, five six million six million three hundred eighty thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars. I move it. 
So Second. Anyone move it. Discussion on this at all? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is fire. No special detail, Joe. Next is special detail. Page 32. How do I always skip that? I don't know. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I can find it. 32. Oh. Okay. Uh, 525,000. No recommended changes. So moved. Second. Bob, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is fire services. Operating request of six million four thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars. Uh, recommended change of moving three hundred. I'm sorry, reduction of uh, three hundred four thousand six eighty-six, which represents the increase request on the medic shift. Um, and part timers. That, part timers. Thank you. And that's again uh, contemplating further discussion. There is a corresponding add back in the contingency of 90% of that number. Again, that was, uh, uh, I think that's still appropriate. Uh, again, looking to have further discussions with regards to the staffing. So before I move this, um, uh, the procedurally, the, if in fact, uh, we move it to contingency. It could get moved back out by us, or it could be moved out by conceivably by the RTM if that if that makes yes, sense could, during could, their budget deliberations. Yes, it could be moved by the RTM. Yes, correct. So um, that if that, why don't we just vote on that line item for this one because it is a. a well, I think we understand what it's doing, but as long as the board isn't. Unison on it, so um, that line item would be two hundred fifty-two thousand four forty-two. So moved. Moved move by it. Bob. What's the bottom number? Though? I'm going to get oh, to the bottom yeah, number. I'd like to vote it. on that line oh, item. Fine. I'll second it, Joe. Seconded by Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So now that Charlie's bottom line on that. Um, that number would be five million six ninety nine five hundred and forty that forty. So it's five million six hundred ninety nine thousand five forty. Now I can move it. Okay, Charlie's moving it. Seconded by Second. Bob. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Next budget is building inspection and enforcement, 182,445. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved move by Bob, seconded by Jeff. Jeff. All in favor? Aye. 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 Animal control transfer out to the fund of 104,916. No recommended changes. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We have public works. Um, recommended change to add 9,000 to street lights. Make that line item $356,000. And total budget on that would be $2,492,007. Somebody want to move it? Move it. Moved by Charlie, seconded second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next budget is water pollution control. Again, transfer out of $600,000. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Second. Moved and seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Next is solid waste management. Request of three million one thirty-eight forty-three dollars. We're looking to increase that material handling line item by twenty-four thousand to handle commingled containers and the Preston 
issue, I guess. Um, that light item would be a million two eighty one seventy eight dollars. It would bring the the total budget to three million one sixty two and forty three dollars. So moved. Moved by Robert. Second. Second by Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next budget is engineering. No recommended changes. Total request three hundred sixty thousand four hundred twenty-four dollars. I move it. Moved by Jeff. Second. Second Aye. by Charlie. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next budget is transfer out for human services. A million forty-nine thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars. No, no recommended changes. So moved. Moved by Bob. Seconded by Jeff. Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is elderly services. Four hundred fifteen thousand four ninety four. No recommended changes. I move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff. Oh. Second. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is East Shore District Health Department. Requested 250,942. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Moved by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Lorraine. Their discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is Recreation Department. Request of a million one forty-five seventy-seven dollars. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved Second. by Bob, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Next is Young's Park Commission. Request of $9,415. No recommended changes. I move that. Second. Moved by Charlie, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is parks and open space. Transfer out to the open space fund. <clears throat> 26,800, no recommended changes. So moved. Been moved by Bob. Seconded, Second. seconded by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Next budget is docks and recreational facilities. Request of seventeen thousand nine fifty-two. No recommended changes. I move it. Second. Second by Bob. Moved by Charlie. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public celebration. Twenty-nine thousand sixty-eight dollars. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved by Bob. Second. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is conservation and environment budget, $4,464. No recommended changes. I move it. Moved by Jeff. Second. Sent by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is James Blackstone Memorial Library, a request of a million four eighteen nine hundred forty six dollars No recommended changes. I move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is Willoughby Wallace Library. Um, we have a few recommended changes that would increase the library staff by $1,349 because they forgot to put in their 2% increase. Uh, reduction of other supplies by 2200 because that is getting funded in the current year. We've part of our transfer tonight and library automation uh, due to Comcast at $617 increase. So those line items would be, pro would be adjusted as I described and the total budget would be $235,000. Uh, $323, correct? Yes. I'll move it. It's been moved by Charlie. I second. second it. Second by Lorraine. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is 
debt service principal request of six million seven hundred and thirty six dollars six hundred and twenty five. No, no recommended changes moved by Jeff. Second. Second by Bob. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next is interest for debt service, uh, million five thirty-eight three hundred forty-eight dollars. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved by Bob. Second. Seconded by Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is pensions and contributions. Request of four million six hundred eighty-four thousand three hundred eighteen dollars. Suggesting a couple of changes there. One would be reduced volunteer stipend by fifteen thousand um, dollars to seventy-five thousand, and uh, reduction of the police pension fund by eighty-one thousand to a million eighty thousand sixty dollars. Um, that particular change is due to the fact that we're moving a million dollars, uh, we're recommending moving a million dollars into that fund to uh, inc to decrease the unfunded liability by that same amount, which then de decreases the annual contribution requirement. That um, budget would be four million five eighty eight three oh eight. Thanks, Jim. Four million five eighty eight three oh eight is the uh, is the new revised budget recommendation. So moved. Moved Second. by Bob, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is employee group insurance request of seven million forty three thousand six hundred fifty four dollars, recommending a Reduction of 240,000 on the health insurance premium line item uh, to make that line item six million eight thousand six hundred fifty-four dollars. Uh, again, to uh, fund 100 percent of the Medicare medical claims, similar to what we did on the Board of Ed side as well. Um, so, moved. so that budget would be. Um, you can just check that budget, Bob. That budget would be. Uh, Six million eight oh three six hundred and fifty four dollars. Yep. I'll second. And moved by Bob, that's the one you moved. Mm -hmm. And um, seconded by Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 With regards to municipal insurance, request of two million three hundred forty six thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars. No recommended changes. Move it. Second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is contingency, and that uh, would change by adding 300, sorry, $274,217 uh, as, as uh, to accommodate 90% of the paramedic part-time Line item that we reduced previously. <coughs> that budget would now be a million three fifty one one seventy one. I move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff, seconded by yep. Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So now we'll move on to the capital items for the town I do open space uh, we'll move we'll go to those right. other uh, funds after the capital okay. so um, what page are you on? I'm on page 70 which is actually um, Going to be of the handout. The handout. The handout, page 70. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, for equipment and services, we have three recommended changes. One would be to um, radio upgrade sinking fund, reduce that to 155000 from the request of 70, 175000 mm -hmm. Next, we would reduce the 
police cruisers from requests from 160,000 to 128,000. And that funds, remind me, that funds five? Four. 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 That's what I thought. Okay, four. Likewise, um, the related equipment reduced that from 102,765 to 82,212. So for, and we'll vote for the total on this if you like, but for now, uh, this subtotal is 2,922,312 for total equipment and services. Next on the generators, we um, are recommending not funding those for this fiscal year, pushing them out for consideration into next year so that we reduce that from the animal shelter generator from 46,000 to zero and for the counseling center from 50,000 to zero. Again, pushing those out until 2020 for consideration. And next change would be that actually is the, uh, the total for other requests, other changes, so that that municipal, is that the number on the page should be uh, 5,720,312, which is the town's portion of the capital items. Um, so there's a, I believe that's the correct number, Jim, 5,720,312. Well, yeah, actually, you're, you're only, the, the part you're taxing for uh, is really that top line, so it's the 2,149,312. 2, 2, uh, Got it, okay. So, um, I'll move it, John. Moved 2,149,312 by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And again, any of these other yeah. Items that are being recommended are funded by other uh, debt service and other and other areas grants, and so any of the debt service appropriations would come back to this board at a later date. So with that, we'll move back to um, the other funds on page 61. Yeah, you just have the two refund items, so, yeah, the general fund. Those are where, Jim? Uh, Those are, what page is that on? If you go to uh, page 60, uh, you'll see two items towards the uh, lower 20%, 148000 for the lease fund town and 85000 for the lease fund season. Okay. I'll move them. I've been moved by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So again, that would bring the, that includes all the capital items, including the Board of Eds, but uh, but that's really, the, the, those numbers have changed. So this is the, the 148 and the 60, 85 will cover and tie into the rest of the numbers. Okay. Yeah. You want to do the total? Uh, no. Okay. So um, the open space on page 61, we have uh, total expenditures of 59,283. No recommended changes. I move it. Then moved by Charlie, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next is. Board of Ed Special Funds, Adult Education, uh, total requested 60,000, no recommended changes. So moved. So moved by Bob. Second it. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Next is school age, child care, budget is 665,250, no recommended changes. Move it. Moved by Charlie. Seconded by Jeff. By Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is sewer assessment fund, 167,904. No recommended changes. I'll move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff. 
Second, John. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Next is sewer utility fund, 4,384,295. No recommended changes. I'll move it. Move by. But how about the water assessment fund? Uh, there's nothing there. Uh -huh. Okay, you know. um, that number, Lisa, for the sewer utility fund is four million three eighty four two ninety five. Um, and I lost track. Did somebody move this one? I will. I'll Charlie second. Charlie moved it. Jeff seconded. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Control. Next is animal control fund 291,459. No recommended changes. So moved. Moved by Bob. Second. Second. By got Jeff. It, Jeff. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And next budget is human services fund. No recommended changes. Have requested a million five eighteen four thirty two. I move it. Been moved. Second. Second by Charlie. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I think that's it. Unless we want to start over again. Um, what we'll do is we will take a, uh, a five minute break and just recalculate and make sure we've got the numbers correctly and come back with our final motions for the evening. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wrap up our workshop with resolutions based on <coughs> the previous actions of the board this evening. So the first one is resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of 57262843000 to the Board of Education operating budget plus capital for fiscal year 2018-2019. I'll move that. Second it. And moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of 54,924,109 for all other town departments for fiscal year 2018-19. So moved. Moved by Bob. Second. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next resolved that the Board of Finance hereby passes the following budget for the fiscal year 2000. 18, 2019. Board of Ed Education Operating Budget 56,024,747. Board of Ed Special Ed Education 754,476. Board of Education Capital and Leases $484,620. Subtotal Board of Ed 57,262,843. Town departments, 54,924,109 for a total of $112,186,952. So moved. moved by Bob. Second. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next, resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of $59,283 to the Open Space Fund budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. I move it. I move by Jeff. Second. Second by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, resolve that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of 167904 to the Sewer Assessment Fund budget for fiscal 2018-2019. I'll move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff. Second. Second by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Next, resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of 60000 to the Board of Education Special Fund Budget for fiscal 2018-19. So 
Moved by Bob. Second. Second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Excuse me. Resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of 665250 to the Board of Education Daycare Fund budget for fiscal 2018-19. I move it. Moved by Jeff. <laughs> Second. Second by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of $4,384,295 to the Wastewater Treatment Plant budget for fiscal 2018-2019. I'll move it, Joe. Moved by Jeff. Charlie. Charlie. Second by second, second. seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is Resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of $291,459 to the Animal Control Fund budget for fiscal 2018-19. So moved. moved. Second. By Bob, second by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM an appropriation of $1,518,432 to the Human Services Special Revenue Fund Budget for Fiscal 2018-2019. So moved. Second. Moved by Bob, seconded by Jeff. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Next is resolved that the Board of Finance recommends to the RTM a salary increase of 2.5% for the Register of Voters for each of their two-year term of office. I'll move it. Moved by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Charlie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So as a recap, um, the budget as approved uh, to and recommended to the RTM is $112,186,952, increase of over the current year budget of $373,000. <laughs> 373,977, which is three tenths of one percent increase. Uh, estimated revenues at this point is 12,697,502, uh, with an estimated net to be raised from taxation of 99,489,450. Uh, estimated grand list of 3.551 billion dollars equating to an estimated budget of 28.67 mills, 20 basis points increase or 7 tenths of 1%. And as we know, uh, the RTM will act on this budget. They can move around line items. They, they can decrease the budget. Uh, they, they cannot increase it. And that finalized budget expenditures will come back to the Board of Finance in May. We will validate and and, um, and solidify the revenues and then set the mill rate officially uh, at that meeting. So with that, that finishes our work for tonight and our budget budget deliberations. Who would like to thank uh, Jim and Catherine and Lisa and Jamie um, from the town hall and the Sockman's office and finance department and town clerk. Um, Jamie, you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, <clears throat> Joe, I just thank you and the board for once again for your thoughtful consideration and uh, uh, recommendations for the budget. Uh, this budget upholds our mission of really uh, investing in our infrastructure, uh, uh, funding our future liabilities, and uh, uh, providing programs and services uh, for the residents of Brantford. Um, you know, with that said, you know, we focus on this time of year as the budget budget season. However, as I said in the past, um, you know, the town staff and myself and working closely with uh, the finance department, Jim Finch and Catherine, really look to maintain, manage uh, the budget throughout the year, but also look for efficiencies and ways to reduce the uh, taxpayer burden. As uh, demonstrated last uh, meeting where we had a couple presentations looking at options to uh, further uh, control growing costs. 
Uh, I look forward to coming before this board in the near future as we present and discuss some other options. Um, but I just, uh, as we go forward to in the next couple months uh, with the RTM and essentially uh, further reviewing this budget. But thank you for your time and effort. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Any uh, comments or final comments from the board? If not, um, with I'll any, make a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The preceding program was brought to you through the support of the Town of Brantford.